do, does that have to get entered into the Leads Online database, or how does that work? Oh. Hey, everybody. How's it going? So I just want to read you a letter that I got from the Department of Consumer Affairs, New York City Consumer and Worker Protection. It says, important notice about your license expiration date. Action required. An emergency executive order that has extended license expiration dates and renewal application deadlines because of COVID has ended. Your license will expire on August 14th, 2021. You are receiving this notice because you have not submitted a complete license renewal application. To renew your license, we encourage you to use our online service, which is available at this website, or mail your application to this address. For health and safety reasons, the DCWP Licensing Center and New York City Small Business Support Center cannot serve walk-ins, but you can schedule an appointment to submit your license renewal application in person. Appointments are limited. To schedule an appointment, email this address or call this number. In bold print, if you do not renew your license by August 14, 2021, you will not be able to operate your business. If you do not submit your license renewal application by October 12, 2021, you will not be able to renew your license and must apply for your new license. You will not be able to operate your business. Now, this may seem reasonable. Why don't you just renew your license? Well, I did over a year ago. On June 7th, 2020, I paid and I went through the process online. So they give you a paper. It has one of those one-time pins and you can use it to renew your license online. I can't renew it again because I've used that pin to renew the license. So it's no longer valid. Like I can't renew the license twice on the online form because that doesn't, it, it, it doesn't apply anymore. And the application was also an application that I mailed in as well just in case they screwed it up. So I have a receipt, and I'll post it here, which is redacting some credit card information that demonstrates that I paid over $346 to have this license renewed over a year ago. Now, I actually did email my staff and asked them to print the receipt and put it in the window. And this is over a year ago, because I expected that they were not going to send me my license or were going to do something screwy. I've had lots of bad experiences with the DCA. This is a video that I did last year. It took them four months four months to process a change of address and send me a new license. You're not supposed to do business until you get this piece of paper with your address. It took them four months to send me this. So had I actually done that instead of just operate without this piece of paper up there for a full month, I would have been paying $12,500 for a space that I can't operate on. But they not only did they send me the license four months late, but it was crinkled and ripped. They used to send you this license on some nice, really fancy stock paper. Now they send it on printer paper that I shit you not is cheaper than the stuff that I get at State staples for the store. So I was expecting this. So I have a receipt in my store that's right. In, I don't actually have a license in my store. I still have this license from a year ago that is torn in the corner over here as this little tear that it says, says it expired on June 30th. But in the store, I have it right next to the receipt that shows that I paid for the renewal, fully expecting this day to come. Now, why don't I just email them to resolve this issue? I mean, this, this seems simple enough, Lewis. You just email or call and you resolve it, right? Well, in the nine years that I've had DCA licenses, I've never gotten an email response from the DCA. Ever. Never, never, never. So just a few months ago, I did a video where I was talking about a summons and a fine that I had received for not submitting things to the Leads Online database. The absolute TLDR of this video is if you are buying devices from customers, you need to submit the information regarding that machine and that customer to a Leads Online database. So around 2014 or 15, we had the police come into the store. They, de they introduced us to the program. There was no fines. They just wanted to introduce us to the program. And they said, if you buy a device from a customer, you log into this database after you register and you submit the information. We don't buy devices from customers. It's just not something we do. The only machines that we sell are devices where the customer says, you can keep it, Lewis. I, it's not worth fixing for me. Or machines where after one or two or three years of us emailing them, calling them, texting them, they never get back to us on the repair. At that point, according to the DCA's own regulations regarding recycled goods, and according to the contract that I give customers, they have forfeited the device. If I've been calling you and emailing you and texting you for over a year saying, please come pick this up, and you don't pick it up for over a year, I sell it. This is not a purchase. So I don't submit those to leads online because the police officer said, when you buy something from a customer. Now, the agent who walked in said that we did not have records. I said, yes, we do have records. Do you want to see the records? I have a record where this customer said, keep the device. And we said, thank you, and we recycled it. He didn't want to see it. He wanted to see a Leeds Online record. Now, many of you have asked, why don't you just enter a record that says you bought it for $0? I don't, because nobody ever told me to do that. They said when you buy a device, and buy means that money or something was traded. I've traded something for something else. If someone just says, here, here is something, or someone just leaves something, it never gets back to us for years, that's not a purchase. So there's nothing to submit. Had I known that they were going to use this manipulative twist, conniving wording of the law just to find something to fine us for, of course I would have been doing that. 
but I didn't, I, I didn't, I can't foresee into the future how New York City is going to twist its own laws to screw over the business owners and find reasons to find. So I didn't do that. Anyway, uh, getting to the point here. I contacted the Department of Consumer Affairs because I wanted to ask them, what am I supposed to do in this instance? What am I supposed to do if a customer recycles a device with us and we didn't buy it? I know that we're supposed to submit records to the Leads Online database if we buy devices, but we don't do that. So if somebody recycles it, what is my responsibility to ensure I'm in compliance with the law? And that is this video over here, where if you fast forward to about 3 minutes and 14 seconds, you will hear someone who is absolutely high as a kite trying to uh, figure this out and for about 15 minutes they have no clue they transferred me to somebody else who was supposed to be able to help me with my problem they also had no clue so they gave me an email address that i could email and that email address has never gotten back to me i had an issue with a fine about an unclear rule from the department of consumer affairs in 2012 and i emailed them and i called them i called and they said that i should email and i never got a reply from them it's been nine years. I've never gotten an email response from the DCA, ever, in the entire time that I have had a Department of Consumer Affairs license. I have never gotten a response via email from the DCA. Now, as it says in this document, it says that I cannot renew my license in person. So I cannot show up to the DCA office in person like I once did and figure out what is going on and speak to a person. I need to email them to get an appointment. I have tried to go to the DCA and they have said without a valid appointment, they cannot let me in. So I need to email somebody who for nine years has never responded to an email in order to figure out why it is they don't think the license payment that I made last year for my renewal is actually renewal. And if I don't get an email response by August 14th, the license renewal that I paid for, that for some reason they don't think is processed, won't be processed, and it'll mean that I have to shut down my business. I'm absolutely beside myself here. I'll just be honest. I, I've... I know that New York City bureaucracy is not the most efficient thing. I've had other experiences with them. W regarding this fine, I tried to pay it. It was impossible to pay. I included that in uh, this video. I tried to pay one of the fines. I could not pay it. They sent me the, the way that I could pay it via mail, but they sent it to me about a month late. So they actually sent it to me after I was able to cure the violations. Oh, I had to go to the hearing. It was about a two or three hour long phone call just to figure out what the fine was, just to figure out what the fine was so that I could then pay the fine. I know that New York City bureaucracy is hell. But this, this is not funny anymore. This really isn't funny anymore. Look, I have to rely on the fact that an e someone's going to email me back when in nine years, I have never received an email back to any inquiry I've ever sent to the DCA in order to be in business so that I could renew a license that I renewed a year ago that you never sent me. And we know you don't have a good history with mail. We know you don't have a good history with mail because when you mailed out the information for my violation, it came a month late. And when you mailed me my change of address for my license, it took four months and it came ripped. I know what everybody in this comment section is going to say. Lewis, leave. They're literally asking you to leave. They're saying that you cannot operate your business in spite of the fact that you renewed your license and they're not going to respond to you. So leave. There are 14 people here that I employ. 14 people. A lot of people in my comment section will say that as a boss, I'm, I must be a douche. I must be a horrible person to work for. I must be a dick. Imagine this. Imagine that you are the top rated repair shop in New York City. And the reason that you are the top-rated repair shop in New York City on Google Maps, literally the most reviews and the highest rating, is because you have a staff that bust their ass every single day for the entire time you've been in business so that your business thrives, so that you look good, so that your customers are happy. And what you do is you walk in one day and you say, hey, I know that your kids are going to school here. I know that your whole family lives here. I know you have a life here. But if you don't move 1,000 miles in the next three weeks, you're fired. How does that inspire loyalty in people? How does that inspire people to do a good job at their next job? How is that the right thing to do to people? Now, I have been putting together a plan to open up another shop for mail-in business and also walk-in business outside of New York City and to keep a small New York City walk-in location for the dwindling New York City business and for the employees that live here that are not able to move. Because some of them, they've purchased houses, they have kids here, they're not able to move on a dime. I have a plan to find something somewhere else, but I can't move inside of three weeks and just toss out the people that have helped make this business the success that it is. For all the people in my comments that say that you seem like a douche or horrible employer, what kind of person just says, I don't care about the people that have been loyal through thick and thin for the past six, seven, eight years? Toss them out if they don't move within a week. 
you know, one of the people that's involved here, uh, she's, you know, she supports her kid off of this, this job and she works alongside her husband. I'm never going to forget this moment about five or six years ago where she's looking for a lens cleaner and a microfiber cloth and she gets it and she's actually going into the keyboard and like digging in. And I said, what are you doing? And she goes, uh, she, 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 her English is, she, she, her English wasn't as good back then. She was, she was uh, learning. She's she was from Kazakhstan. And she says, no, I make smoother. Because what she was doing is she was taking the microfiber cloth and the lens cleaner, and after she took the keyboard out of the computer, since the MacBook has little holes for the keys that the keys go through, the keyboard is not just one membrane, she was actually cleaning each individual keyhole to ensure that there was no residue or dirt on it so that when the new keyboard was put in, each key pressed with the exact same amount of pressure as the other key. This was not part of our procedure. This is not something that I showed her or taught her. She was doing that because she cares about doing a good job. These are the types of people that work here, and that's why, even if I do move my business to another city or to another state, that I feel the way that I do about keeping some presence in the city for those that are not able to move, because I know that when I leave, you break, I fix, or CPR is not going to pay these people what I'm paying them. Uh, that, that, that's, that's a bit of an understatement there. And I appreciate the loyalty that they've shown me, and I want to show them the loyalty back of not telling them that in three weeks, if you don't move 1,000 miles away, you lose your job. But this is literally kind of like the city forcing my hand here. And you may think this is ridiculous. Just email them. Why are you worried? Why are you stressing over this? Look, just listen to this phone call. Listen to this 16-minute video and tell me in your heart of hearts that you believe that there is any competence here. Do, does that have to get entered into the Leads Online database, or how does that work? Oh, I have... No faith in getting a response from this. I've had people say, call your senator. Call, why don't you call your senator on these things? Why don't you call your assembly person? Why don't you sue? I have, you know, the, Biden just released an executive order on right to repair asking the FTC to do something. I've been working on drafting something for the FTC with an antitrust attorney for several months. I was interviewing lobbyists last week. I got one for Olympia, Washington. We're going to be hiring lobbyists in the states where right to repair is a thing. There's a lot of work that has to be done, important work that will really move things forward. And, this, you know, suing some department in the city is just that for harassment or for this nonsense. This is it's not a productive use of time. It's not even something that I particularly know how to do. And, you know, I've gotten something in some of these videos. I've gotten some comments when I show you when I walk around and I show you all the businesses that are gone or the businesses that are dead in every block, like, oh, what is this guy's agenda? These are just right-wing talking points. No, it's not. It's not. It's not a left-wing talking point. It's not a libertarian talking point. It's not an anarcho-capitalist talking point. It's not a social democratic talking point. It's reality. It's reality. Getting this document after receiving a receipt from the city one year ago that they're not able to respond to, that's not a left or a right-wing talk. That's reality. It's reality. It's the reality of what the city is becoming. And sometimes I think that there may be a point of hubris where I walk around the city with my camera and I show you all these places that are gone, all these places that are dead, all these places with broken windows, decayed, where there used to be a business that is not a business anymore. What makes me think that I'm special? What makes me think that I'm going to get any better treatment from this city than any one of these other businesses that are gone? I don't want to tell 14 people that they have a month to find a new job. But maybe this is the only thing that's actually going to give me the kick in the ass to finally just effing leave. Not have a slow transition like I planned, where I slowly transition and I open a shop in a new location and I slowly bring over the people and, uh, you know, help cover their ex moving expenses that are open to moving to the new location and slowly transition in New York City from a larger store to a smaller store, or I just say, I'm done. Maybe this is a blessing. Maybe them saying that in the next month, I'm literally not able to do business legally is exactly what I need. That's not a great solution for the people that work here. It's not a great solution for my customers. I don't think it's a good solution for the city. I'm just going to make a plea here. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be humble. I'm going to grovel. If you watch these videos and you work at the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs or you work for an agency that is above the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs, can you fix this? I'm not asking for special treatment. I'm not asking for something special to be done. I'm asking for you to accept the $346 that I paid you one year ago for my license renewal 
and apply it. I'm asking that when I email you, that unlike all the other emails that I've ever sent to the Department of Consumer Affairs over the past nine years, that you actually read it. I'm asking that, well, this is, this is a little late, that you not have inspectors that twist the spirit and the meaning of the law to create technicalities, to find businesses that are not doing anything wrong. If you, I've had people say, oh, you're acting like a pawn shop under the table. How do they know? How do they prove that you're not doing that? How do I prove you're not a murderer? How do I prove that you're not killing people late at night and then carting them off and tossing them into the ocean? Prove it. Prove that you didn't do that. That's not the way that we, it works in America. In America, the burden of proof is in the prosecution to prove that you did something wrong. If you walk into my store, you'll see we have no cell phone cases for sale. We have no chargers for sale. We have no accessories for sale. I stick to my knitting. I'm not a pawn shop. I don't deal with like buying stuff off of the street. I don't have to prove that I don't do that. It's your job to prove if I'm doing it. If you work at any of these departments that can do anything, please, again, I'm, I'm not asking for special treatment. I don't want a discount on anything special. I paid this one year ago and I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to email this address and like every other email that I've ever sent to the DCA for nine years, it's going to go into an abyss. It's going to go into a little black hole abyss. That's never going to get answered. And then on August 15th, somebody's going to walk into my store and they're going to go, oh, it looks like your license has expired. And I'm going to say, well, no, it's not. I renewed it. Here's my paperwork. And they're going to say, this is, this is a receipt, but that's not a license. You have to close. And then a marshal is going to come by. And when the marshal comes by, they're going to put a lock in the door. I'm not going to be able to get in. I wouldn't put it past New York City to do that. Again, am I crazy? When I walk up and down the streets, every single business is closed. What makes me think that I'm different? We care about serving the people in the city. And we have served the people in the city very well for over 10 years. If you look, just go MacBook, Repair, in New York City. You just go to Google Maps and you scroll down the list of businesses here. You will see that the best and highest rated place in a 20 mile radius is our store. Because we bust our ass for the people of the city. We deserve better than this. We do. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Hopefully, this gets resolved. Hopefully, somebody actually responds to my email. Imagine what the people who don't have 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube have to do when this happens to them. Sad. See you in the next one.